Human creation, it's a hugely debated and confusing topic and answers such as how we were made and where did we start out have no real solid explanation. But here are five theories of how people believe we humans were created. Let's start with the most widespread theory, the thought that we were created from two humans called Adam and Eve who were put on earth by God. According to this theory, all the different forms of life that occur today on planet earth have been created by God. Adam and Eve were, according to the book of Genesis, the Bible and the Quran, the first man and woman to be created by God. It suggests that he created the universe in seven days, reserving his sixth day of creation to produce man and woman, and then on the seventh day he rested. God fashioned the first human, Adam, from clay and blew the breath of life into his nostrils. He then planted a garden known as the Garden of Eden and grew in the middle of the garden the tree of knowledge of good and evil and the tree of life. God set the man in the garden to work it out and watch over it, permitting him to eat from all the trees in the garden except from the tree of knowledge, for on the day you eat of it you shall surely die. God brought animals to the man for him to name, but none of them were found to be a suitable companion for the man, so God created Eve, because he said, according to the Bible, it's not good for the man to be alone, I will make a helper suitable for him. He put Adam in a deep sleep and took one of his ribs from which to make the woman, and shortly after he made the woman, they both ended up eating the fruit from the tree of knowledge of good and of evil. God was sad that Adam and Eve had disobeyed them and he told them that they had to leave the Garden of Eden and said, from now on you'll have to scratch a living from the soil, you'll need to make clothes and grow food, nothing will come easy, not even childbirth, and one day you will die. So that's the theory, that God created the first man and woman, Adam and Eve, and that's where it all began. Millions of people around the world believe this was how life was formed and before the 1800s this really was the only acceptable form of human creation. Humans came from apes. Alongside the creation by God, this is the most believed theory of human creation. Humans were created through the process of evolution by natural selection. The human story began about 5 million years ago when there were apes that were unlike modern day apes that we know of. During this time, these apes began to become more and more different. One of these apes began to walk more upright and lost its dense coat of fur. Over time, this ape started to build tools that gave it an advantage over the other apes. Around 2.5 million years ago, the first human-like ape appeared, and eventually Homo sapiens appeared around 200,000 years ago. It all happened very gradually, with small advantages in surviving and reproducing, meaning that the ancient humans and all of our ancestors lived while the other forms died out. That's the theory, and it was most famously linked with Charles Darwin. Although he didn't entirely believe we came from apes, he believed that humans, apes and other hominoids such as gorillas, chimpanzees and so on, all evolved from a common ancestor. He said if you go back far enough in time on the evolutionary family tree, the branch that leads to humans and the branch that leads to chimps converge. Now what people believe helps strengthen the theory is that fossil records indicate that humans evolved from an organism known as the grey ape or hominidae, a large tailless primitive that lived roughly 14 million years ago and if you look at the fossil record you'll see we didn't evolve from modern day apes but from this grey ape. Although modern day apes are believed to have the same evolutionary ancestor and this is why apes still exist alongside humans because we were both diverted in different paths from the hominidae. Aliens. There are lots of people who strongly suggest we were put on Earth by aliens. Dr. Ellis Silver, a US ecologist, has studied this for years and he believes that humans are not from Earth but were put on the planet by aliens tens of thousands of years ago. He suggests that Earth might be a prison planet since humans seem to be naturally violent species and are here until we learn to behave ourselves. He believes that there are things that us humans show that prove we weren't developed on this planet and that while the planet meets humans needs for the most part, it does not perhaps serve this species interest as well as the aliens who dropped us off imagined. Dr. Silver said, mankind is supposedly the most highly developed species on the planet, yet it's surprisingly unsuited and ill-equipped for Earth. Bad back suggests humans evolved in a world with lower gravity. He also believes humans are not designed to be exposed to the sun as they are on Earth, as they cannot be exposed to the sun every day without problems. He also says that it's strange that babies' heads are so large and make it difficult for women to give birth, which can result in fatalities of the mother and infant. No other native species on the planet has this problem, he says. Humans are also always ill, have a strong dislike for naturally occurring foods and suffer from ridiculously high rates of chronic disease. All this suggests, to him at least, that mankind may have evolved on a different planet and were brought here as a highly developed species. 
Professor Wainwright from the University of Sheffield plans to investigate further, and he believes that life is constantly arriving from space that did not originate on Earth. He is interested in whether humans came to Earth separately, not by aliens, but perhaps arriving on meteors and comets, before evolving into the species we know today. Humans came from the sea. Our slightly webbed hands and feet and several other factors have sparked a theory that we humans evolved from sea creatures. In 2013, there was a major conference in London that was held by scientists, academics, medics, and wildlife experts Sir David Attenborough to discuss a topic about the theory of us evolving from sea animals into humans. One thing that was to be used as evidence as opposed to evolving from apes is that modern day apes do not like water. A human baby, however, will close its larynx and automatically paddle its arms and legs. Other factors that people suggest we came from the sea are that months before we are born, all of us apparently have gill slits, tails and full webbed hands. We only lose these in the very final stages of our growth, just before we're born, through a process known as apoptosis or programmed cell death. This suggests that our ancestors had a use for these things, even though we don't need them now. They also say that the ability of babies to swim and naturally hold their breaths indicate that childbirth was done at sea, and that apparently humans need docosahexaenoic acid, which is an omega-3 fatty acid found in seafood, as this boosts brain growth in mammals. It's believed that without a high DHA diet from seafood, we could not have developed our big brains, and researchers say the large quantity of seafood we would have been eating during our underwater stages would have helped develop our brains enough for us to take to the land and further evolve into early humans. So that's the theory behind whether or not humans evolved from the ocean. What do you think? Although it's been around for a while, it's only recently started getting publicized, the intelligent design theory, which is a scientific approach to the creation of humans. The theory claims that some sort of supernatural designer was involved in the creation of life on Earth. This designer isn't God, but most prominents of intelligent design seem to have a similar higher power in mind. Now, the intelligent design theory is not biblical creation like the first theory I mentioned. There is a distinction between the two positions. Biblical creationists begin with a conclusion that the biblical account of creation is reliable and correct, that life on earth was designed by God. Whereas intelligent design theorists reach the conclusion that life on earth was designed by an intelligent agent, but they just don't know who this so-called agent was. Here are the two main arguments intelligent design believers stand by. They say that the evolutionary theory doesn't fully explain the origin and development of life on Earth, and that the universe shows so much order, purpose, and design that there must have been a designer. So do you think we were created by someone other than God? So that's five theories of the creation of man. Leave a comment down below on what you think, and if you have any of your own theories, I would love to hear them. Thanks for watching, and feel free to subscribe for new content every week.